Hey, I'm Brian Wilkerson, and I want to thank you for either purchasing or taking interest in the Alaria Tech Dual Master Cylinder Booster Delete. In this video, we're going to show you the basics of the assembly and installation into your car. When you receive your kit, it'll look like something like this once you take it out of the box. You'll receive the bracket like this, and then you'll receive all the individual parts as shown here. So the kit is made up of parts from Alaria Technical Manufacturing, which is everything that you need to attach other products from say Tilton or Willwood to your car. So here I'm just going to give you a breakdown of what all the individual parts are that we supply with the Alaria Tech Dual Master Cylinder Booster Delete Kit. So we'll start with the bracket itself. It holds the master cylinders to the firewall and all the linkage together. The next part is the billet rocker arm. What this does is allows the pedal to push on the master cylinders. In this little bag, you have these individual slugs, and these slugs will go inside of the rocker arm, and that's how you adjust your pedal ratio. The large pivot bolt for the top of the rocker arm, the small pivot bolt for the rod end at the bottom that go through the slugs. This is the arm that connects the bottom of the rocker arm to your factory pedal. That's the pin that goes there at the factory pedal location. And then this is the hardware that holds the, the shorter socket cap bolts are for the master cylinders to the bracket, and then depending on your application, you'll either have longer or shorter bolts that hold the bracket to the firewall. Now that we've run through all of the parts that come in the Alaria kit, I'll show you all the parts from Tilton Engineering that you're gonna need. We have the bias knob, which is optional. If you want to adjust your uh, bias from inside the vehicle, uh, that is a part number 72-508, and that is for a yellow knob. They have different part numbers for different colors. Then master cylinders. We use the 75 series master cylinder here. And if you get the ones with the U on the end of the part number, you will get this entire kit instead of just the master cylinder. And that will come with your reservoir and even a remote reservoir bracket if you need that. Um, in most applications, uh, you can just put the reservoir directly on top of the master cylinder to keep things simple. So we have a rear and a front master cylinder, and these are going to vary depending on your application. I recommend you talk to Tilton about the specifics of your vehicle to get the proper master cylinder sizing for your application. And then we have the balance bar here. This is a 72-250 Tilton balance bar. We're going to start by trimming down the master cylinder rods. These need to be shortened so that we can fit everything in the compact space that's required to fit behind like strut towers and sheet metal and other things in the factory location. So in order to do that, we need to shorten these threaded rods. So we're going to leave, we're going to start by leaving about 1.2, 1.25 inches of exposed thread there. Master cylinders are cut, and we are now going to just set these aside. The next step is going to be to assemble the rocker arm assembly. So the way this works is that this slot here allows for an adjustable pedal ratio, and that is done using these little pills, or slugs if you will. These are, for this application, it's S-chassis. The available pedal ratios are as shown, and they are achieved by locating the hole in relation to the pivot point. So in this case, with the hole being all the way up, that would be a 5.6 pedal ratio. Take it out, and you take the same one and move it all the way down to the bottom, that would be a 6.83 to 1 pedal ratio. And then you have all of these other options here that are included so that you can choose what pedal ratio you want to start with. Here are those slugs all paired up. We want to start with a 6 to 1 pedal ratio, so this one right here is what we're after. So these are the slugs we're going to use. Take the rest of the slugs and save them for later in case you want to make a pedal ratio adjustment change. Slug installed into the billet pivot point. Take your, your rod end. That goes inside of here. smaller of the two shoulder bolts. The 
Now that you have your pill installed, it is easier to install this assembly separately and then slide it down here through so that the push rod goes through this hole and then you can install your larger of your two shoulder bolts. Now you want to install your balance bar into the large center bore of the billet pivot and you need to make sure that you have equal amounts of thread on both sides here and that these are the same spacing as the master cylinders which is two and a half inches so you want these to be two and a half inches center to center uh, once finally installed so you'll notice that this balance bar has a longer threaded section on one side that is the side that you are going to want to attach your uh, in cockpit bias adjustment cable to if you are not using one it doesn't really matter but we are going to use one in this case and we want it to come out of this side or the left side of the car so we're going to make sure that we are aware of that and then again two and a half inch center to center for these holes. So when I thread this on here, I want this to be two and a half inches, but I also want the bearing to be centered. So I need to be mindful of the amount of threads exposed here and here as well. All right, that's about my two and a half inch center to center. And what that does is that will keep the rods here off of the master cylinders parallel to each other. Now the next step here, we are going to attach the master cylinders to the bracket. Now in some cases, depending on the application, you might not be able to, to do that uh, for uh, space constraints. Sometimes you have to bolt the bracket in first and then bolt the master cylinders to it. But in this case, we can do that. Also, while it's a little cumbersome to install, um, using studs here would make that impossible, so we use through bolts, which we supply as well. So, for those reasons, we are going to install the master cylinders first. We normally put the front master cylinder on the left side of the bracket, right? So over here, and then the rear master cylinder will go on this side. So, because we are so tight on space here, while you are installing this master cylinder, you also need to start threading it into the clevis on the balance bar. So you'll also notice that socket cap bolt goes in from the back and that there isn't much space here, so you're going to have to kind of thread that nut on as you install it. Having a ball hex socket is gonna really save you here. So now that you have your master cylinders bolted on and they're all flush with the bracket, uh, you wanna make sure that these are threaded in equal distances. The threaded rod threaded into the clevis an equal amount. However, to start, Tilton suggests that you thread the front brake out about a quarter inch and really what you're trying to achieve is for this balance bar here to be parallel with your firewall uh, after everything's bled and put together but a good starting point is to thread this out an extra quarter inch you should look something like this front brake has a little about a quarter inch more thread exposed than your rear brake while this is on the bench, we might as well install our reservoirs. So this is what the complete assembly looks like outside of the car. So now we're going to put this whole assembly into the car. When you are guiding the booster delete in, make sure that this clevis ends up going around the brake pedal like so. And that goes through the clevis and through the brake pedal. And you will need to adjust that 
rod. Adjust that rod there so that there is no preload on the pedal. Uh, sorry, so that there is no preload on the so there's no preload on the master cylinders. And then tighten up all your jam nuts and you're good to go. The last piece that you will have is this clevis pin and that goes through the clevis and through the brake pedal and you will need to adjust that rod. Adjust that rod there so there's no preload on the master cylinder. There you can see we've got our clevis installed. You put the pin through and then this little cotter pin here for finalizing. Then you can tighten up these little jam nuts. I know the space is tight, but uh, once the length of this is set, you never really have to worry about it. Thanks a lot for watching. If you still have any questions after watching this video, feel free to either leave them in the comments, shoot us an email, a phone call, a private message, reach out however you'd like. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more technical install videos and other cool build videos as well.